Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing today? How is everyone doing today? Hey, once again, this is Greg Wilds coming live to you from Houston, Texas, with this inspirational morning walk. I can sit in the vehicle here today and get this little word out. But how are you guys doing today? I hope it's a great day wherever you are. I hope it's a great day. It's a beautiful day here in Houston. Nice sun. As you can see, the sun is coming through there. It's a nice sunny day here in Houston, man. So, But I'm going to get out this little word quickly here today. I want to talk about hearing the Lord. Hearing the Lord. Do we... Is he talking to us and we're not hearing him? Is he talking to us and we're not hearing him, right? I want to talk about hearing God's voice, you know, and acting upon it, what, what he's telling us to do, hearing God's voice. I can use this one from 1 Samuel. We can look at 1 Samuel um, and 1 Samuel. This is 3. 1 Samuel 3, right? So when he um, spoke to Samuel, when the Lord was speaking to Samuel and he didn't hear his voice, right? So we want to put ourselves in a position where we can hear God's voice. Because if he continues to keep speaking to us, he's going to just stop speaking. He's going to stop speaking to us. Like we we'll tell the kids, in, 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 um, if your coach is on you, if your coach is on you trying to correct you, you might think he's hard on you. But when he stop talking to you, that's the problem. When he stop, when you make making mistakes and to stop trying to correct you, that's where the issue is, right? So when they're talking to you, trying to correct you, you might think they're hard on you and you get in, oh, I coach. But that's when you know they're interested in you. And, um, but when they stop talking to you, that's an issue, right? So let's look at 1 Samuel 3. 1 Samuel 3. So meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by, assist, by assisting Eli. Now in those days, the message from the Lord was very rare and visions were quite uncommon. So there come a point when God, the uh, messages from the God was rare. God wasn't speaking a lot. God wasn't speaking a lot to the people back in, the, in this time here. And the visions were rare. God wasn't saying a lot. That tells me, you know what? He probably didn't like as much as what was going on. Because he, you know, the, the scripture said where this vision, people perish, right? So he didn't give them no vision. He didn't start speaking to them a lot in those days there, right? So one night, Eli was almost blind by now. You know, Eli was the priest, right? Eli was the priest, right? One night, Eli was, was almost blind by now. Had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of the God. Suddenly the Lord called out, Samuel! Yes, Samuel replied, what it is? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. So Samuel sleeping, he hear this voice says, Samuel, call his name. He go to Eli. And he said, yes, Eli, what it is, what you need? Eli said, I didn't call you. I didn't call you, bro. You're hearing things. Go back to bed. Right? Then the Lord called Samuel again. And Samuel got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? He ran to Eli again. Eli said, I didn't call you, my son, Eli. Eli said, go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had, he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time, and once again Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, Go and lie down again. And if someone calls, someone calls again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. So the Lord is calling Samuel, but, you know, he's not sure of the voice because he never had a message from the Lord. He's not sure. So he run into Eli physically, and Eli, you see, Eli's the old priest. Eli know what's going on, but the Lord has stopped speaking to Eli. There's a whole history behind that where um, the message what God is going to give to Samuel, right? So we want to put ourselves in a position where we're going to hear from the Lord. And we act on what he said because if he if he continuously keep talking to you and you not listening, 
you're going to stop. You're going to stop, right? You're going to stop. So we want to make sure we're doing them stuff that he's telling us to do. He's speaking to us. He got stuff he want us to do. You got to go ahead and you got to act on it, man. You got to act on it. You got to act on it. Probably this message is a confirmation that, 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 that he's speaking to you. And you just got to say, okay, God, just direct me. Here I am. I'm going to do what you're asking me to do, whatever that is, right? So let's go on. This is 1 Samuel 3. We are on 11 now. Then the Lord said to Samuel, see, now we give the Lord permission. Now Eli um, advised him. Eli realized what's going on. So he says, speak, Lord. So now we're willing to hear in the Lord. Now the Lord's going to talk to him because the Lord want to make sure you're going to listen to him when he's talking to you, right? He just don't want to talk on their fear. So so now he said, okay, speak, Lord. I'm listening. I'm hearing. I know you now, you know. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I'm going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. I have warned him that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God and he hasn't disciplined them. So I have vowed that the sin of Eli and his sons will never be forgiven by the sacrifice or offering. Now, here is, is, is the next piece of this I want to go on to. Now, Eli's sons, Eli was the priest, and his sons then was doing a lot of stuff, stealing the people's sacrifices when they bring them, and they're doing a lot of stuff. He was not disciplining his sons. He was not disciplining his sons. So God is saying, I'm going to destroy you and your family because you know what these guys were doing. You were the priests, and you were not disciplining them. You were not stopping them from doing the wrong. So this is a message I want to give to parents here too, man. And there's an next scripture there. I didn't have it here with me. But if you know people are doing wrong, and you don't correct them, you are just as guilty as them, right? You're just as guilty as them. If they're doing wrong and you do not correct them, you go along with it, you cover up for them. And how much of us are guilty of that, right? We got our friends or family or whatever, and they're doing wrong stuff, and we covering up for them, and we hide in their sin. But you are just as guilty as them if you continue to encourage them to do the wrong thing. Right, and you don't stop them. So you see, in this case here, Eli was getting destroyed because he was not disciplining his sons from doing the wrong thing they were supposed to be doing. So God bring destruction on him and his entire family. So man, I'm saying that people, man, you know people doing wrong, and I'm very guilty of it too. A lot of us are guilty of it. You guys, your friends, you know they're doing wrong. They might ask you to cover up for them, to, to whether it's the girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, and you're covering up for them, and you know they're doing wrong. Hey man, you are just as guilty as them if you're gonna covering up for the wrong and keep encouraging them. Good morning, good morning, Cassie. Good morning, how are you doing? Hope you're having a great day, man. Yes, yeah, so you got to be careful, guys. You know people doing wrong. Don't be covering up for them. You would let them know. Tell them, hey, that's wrong. I cannot be a part of what you're doing. Because the minute I encourage you, I covering up for you for the wrong you're doing, I am just as guilty as best I go and do the wrong myself. I'm just as guilty as you in doing the wrong, man. So that's the message I want to get home to people today. I'm guilty of it. When I get this revelation, man, I just had a lot to repent for myself. Because you know sometimes you tell yourself, I ain't going to do it. But okay, I, I'm going to help you cover it up. No, 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 no. you just as wrong. Just as wrong. If you know they're doing wrong and you encourage them and you don't stop them from doing it or tell them, I, I don't want to part in it. So you see, Eli's house was destroyed here because God said, to him, man, your son was doing wrong and you did not discipline them so i'm going to bring judgment on you and your whole house right now because you should know better you were my priest you should know better and you should not encourage them to do wrong and not discipline them so you got your kids man you see how eli was held accountable for not disciplining his kids you got your children you got to discipline them don't be their friend you be the parent because lots of things they do not know at their age they're teenagers they want to do their own thing you got more knowledge. You got to help keep them in line because you can be held responsible if you don't 
bring them up in the path. Because they don't know what they know. They can suffer their consequences for their action. But you're going to be held accountable for not guiding them in the right direction. All right, guys. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to leave that there today, man. So but you guys go on. Have a great, great day. And we'll talk again on Wednesday. But just keep your ears open for God's voice when he's talking to you. Just like how we talked to Samuel here. All right, guys. Have a great day. Okay, bye.